We want to welcome our interim pastor, Pastor Steve Parker.
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Restore us, O God of hosts. Give us peace and strength in our days. Be present with us, and we shall be saved. We will sing and light the Advent candle. I'm sorry. Go right ahead.
you to sing that. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, and one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together. One will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, that the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would not have stayed. Be awake, therefore, you must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Christ. Please be seated. Well, grace be unto you in peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. It is a joy to be here. It really is. It really is. I'm fired up, folks. And yes. this is just the day uh, to begin to get fired up with me, right? You have a good thing going here. Uh, I, I hope you know that. You, you do. Um, in the midst of all the challenges we face in the world today, this is the day the Lord has made, and we are rejoicing in it. And yes, in this era, we will celebrate everything we can. We'll identify your gifts, we'll steer this ship in the right direction. And we will find what God has in mind for us. But we carry on of listening, listening to God, listening to each other, listening to our neighbors, right? But I trust that God is with us. This Sunday, we celebrate this idea of, of getting ready and staying awake. Every preacher loves this text because nobody falls asleep this Sunday during the sermon. <laughs> Be awake. Be ready for the Lord. And as I said a few minutes ago to our young people, it's like an alarm clock, you know? It, these words from Isaiah and Matthew go so well together. The, the candles of the Advent wreath. We have one today, the candle of hope. Do we ever have hope for the future? This color blue is the endless possibilities of that blue sky when the clouds burn away. That's what we have to look forward to, and that's to which Advent points. Wake up, it's a new church year. I could have said Happy New Year, but I thought I'd blow your mind. They did say, this, this guy's off his rocker. Well, you're right. I am off my rocker, but it's not, it's not New Year's Day yet. Uh, but this is the beginning of the church year, uh, the very first Sunday of the liturgical year. Uh, and so we celebrate preparation, uh, a, a time to wake up, a time to wait in expectation, yet also anticipation. We're not quite there yet. As throughout the church year and as throughout the life of the Christian, we're always becoming what God intends us to be. And I think this week in Advent is a wonderful time to celebrate that. We are a part of a past and looking forward to a future that God has fingerprints on. Because of the birth of Jesus, we celebrate. But what specifically are we anticipating today? What, what, are you, what are you looking forward to? What are you getting ready for? What do you expect to happen? Do you believe that the Holy Spirit's going to be here working? I hope you do. Because otherwise, you're in for a surprise. The Spirit is going to be working among us. It's a promise, and God keeps His promises. 
This is not a time, as some of our brothers and sisters in Christ might insist, that we need to get ready for the end of the world. No, that's not what Jesus or Isaiah had in mind when they wrote about the coming of the Son of Man. They were talking about a good time, a time of peace and, and prosperity and hope and joy, a time when God's people would become fully what God intended them to be. So uh, I think we're preparing in our hearts and minds for that kind of advent. One that we just can hardly stay in our seats we're so excited for. You know, I, I think of, uh, I have grandchildren now, okay? I, I'm a grandfather. I have two children, okay? I, I have a daughter and a son, and my daughter gave birth to four beautiful children that we celebrate all the time. And they are so excited sometimes about things that I can't keep them in, in their place. Some of you parents and grandparents know that? Yeah. Imagine being that way in the church, right? <laughs> We're so excited. We can't wait to get up <laughs> and, and, and do whatever God's calling us to do. Now, it's true. Some of us don't, you know, our, our get up and go got up and went. <laughs> you heard that. I'm getting there with you, you know. But we all still have something to share. And have been some time to unpack that. It's a time we can hardly sit in our seats because of what God is about to do. We celebrate in the church this Advent time not just as a countdown to Christmas, but as a way of looking forward to the fact that God is God of all creation and that God's intention is that in the end, when his Son comes again, we will be one in Christ. Have you ever seen the movie Groundhog Day? Oh, I hope so. It, it's a great movie. Bill Murray is, is the lead role. But, you know, literally, Bill Murray wakes up, what, day after day after day to repetition. It's the same day he lives over and over again. <clears throat> kind of a selfish way. He didn't really look out for us or care about others. But each time he is, he awakes to a new day, he learns a little bit more about what it is to be in relationship with other people. That he might not be the center of the universe. That these other folks matter. And eventually, we, we know, Bill breaks the mold. And he throws away that repetition and he, he wakes once into this new world. For us, for us today, I think our participation in this interim work is a lot like looking at the, the routines, the scripts that we've had every day of our lives and play over and over again and saying, you know, some of those scripts could change. Some of them need to be thrown out and there maybe need to be some new ones established, right? Right. We don't want to be in a groundhog day world. We want to be in an advent world. A world that calls us to wake up, to welcome our Savior, and then to walk in the Savior's life. That's what I like about Advent. So Robert Frost, great poet, right? He memorialized this concept for me in a very poetic way. He, uh, he dreamed of, of being in a New England woods with the light snow falling, you know, not a blizzard, but the very pleasant snowflakes coming down. And he says, he mused, the woods are lovely, dark, and deep, but I have promises to keep, and what miles to go before I sleep. And that's what I want you to think about. We have miles to go before we sleep. We can jump, uh, joke about our age, and we can say, gee, we, you know, we've been here a long time, and we might even admit sometimes our doubt that, hey, maybe our best days are behind us. That's not where we want to go today or every day in the future. We have miles to go before we sleep, and we are capable of doing wonderful things in Christ. 
We can keep our promise not because we're so great, but because God is so great. God's promise in baptism, you are God's son, you are God's daughter. And in so claiming us, God stamps us with the stamp of approval. So let me share this as I close. I'm coming to the end. Hang in here, my friends. First of all, I ask you, how are you waiting this Advent? I hope you're waiting expectantly. Expectantly. It's not as if we have a dentist appointment, you know, with a root canal. You don't have to feel that way. It's not like you're going to the doctors to hear some bad news. It's more like a child anticipating the visit of Santa Claus. That's what the life in Christ is like. God loves us so much. God protects us and guides and directs us and blesses us. And so we wait with expectation for what God is yet to do. Second, we wait hopefully. We are a hopeful group of people. Knowing that God loves us and is with us and that God is a promise keeper makes a huge difference in our lives, doesn't it? And finally, third, we wait actively. Actively. When Martin Luther was asked what he would do if he heard the world would end tomorrow, do any of you know what he said? Pastors? Plant a tree. Plant a tree. I think Augustine actually said it before him. But I, I, give, I give Martin Luther credit for a lot of things. You know? I, it works. It did. Yes. He would plant a tree. Well, what did he mean by that? He meant, I'm, I'm going to keep living. Because I have nothing to fear. When I, when I die, I'm with God. And in this life, God has called me to this good work. And I will keep doing it with joy. Expectantly, hopefully, actively we wait. As the people of God at LCLS, I hope that our interim is marked by that willingness to respond to God's call. Make no mistake about it. God is doing a new thing among us. It would be much easier <laughs> if we would admit that all of us play a part in that new dream that God has for each of us as individuals and as a congregation. So what do they say in the Navy? They blow the horn, they say, now hear this! Now hear this! Right? It goes out. Jesus is coming again, but before he comes into the hours of our lives, he is making plans to change and direct and guide us in new ways. And so, I think we can pray with the earliest church. They prayed in Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Can you say that with me? Come, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Amen.
Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body and blood of the one who foretold, who was foretold by the prophets. This is the blood of him who will return for you at the end of time. Come to us now, O Lord, in the breaking of bread, as once you were born in a manger in Bethlehem. Come to us again in the manger of our hands and hearts. Amen. May God be with you as you keep watch for the one whose advent is promised. Amen. May God embolden your witness to Christ, coming and, and so prepare his way. Amen. May you be found ready and alert in Christ's return, at peace in body, mind, and spirit, and doing his will. Amen. And may the Almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever.
Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.